Hey everybody, I'm excited. Today we're gonna do the satin sash. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Uh, I, I've completely left that it under painting. There is no, nothing on here except for that last stage of the Miche technique, um, the blue with the white over. So it is ready to go. We're gonna glaze it in and then we're gonna go in with some detail with some highlights and some shadows so you can kind of see the whole thing come to life. Um, fabric is really fun to paint. I'm excited to uh, add this pop of color uh, to the rest of the painting so you'll really see it come to life. So it's fun sometimes, even when you're painting on your own, right? And, uh, you know, it's fun to leave things um, for drama, you know? I think we have to kind of keep it, keep it exciting and fun for ourselves. So, you know, adding a bit of the dramatic into your own process is really something I look forward to uh, as I'm working on each of the each of my paintings and uh, something you could try as well. So without further ado, let's hop into that red satin. Here I am just doing a red glaze over the entire thing. So uh, I'm doing a balance of doing quite a bit of chroma as well as glazing it in. So you'll see me kind of going back over it to make sure that I've got it red enough. Okay, so the glaze is in and I've started going in with a shadow color very, very delicately, just kind of getting, uh, getting in those shadows that I've so nicely built up in my underpainting. Because of the color of the red um, over the blue, it definitely does a thing um, with your underpainting. And that's definitely part of the miche, right? Every time you, uh, you begin with a color glaze, um, you're really going to change the information underneath certain colors. Um, are more intense to work with than others, which, you know, makes sense. Certain colors are just more intense, period, right? So, what I'm doing here is just taking real light handed approach. This I'm going to do in several layers. Uh, as I've said a couple times in some of my previous videos, it's always kind of a goal for me to do the color in two, in two layers. It's just more because, you know, that just means you've kind of um, really set up yourself for success in your underpainting. And that's always my goal is just to kind of get myself as close to perfect in that underpainting as I possibly can. But that's not always possible. Um, and especially with certain colors and certain types of colors. So by types of colors, I even mean um, if you're trying to get something dark, um, uh, Dark glaze is a really uh, a strange and wonderful thing. It's it's almost like an oxymoron in a weird sort of way because, of course, uh, dark also reads as opaque. <laughs> and that's not what you're trying to do, you know? Like, you're not... Tr like, the whole point of doing this technique is that you are trying to keep it light um, somehow. You know, the whole thing has to have a feeling of a lightness, um, both kind of in a physical sort of way, but also in a chromatic sort of way, if that even makes sense. Um, so you're not trying to be heavy handed with the paint at all. And in fact, um, you know, whenever you do get a little too heavy handed, it just, it, um, you know, you're kind of going against all of all of what you've been doing thus far. So you gotta, you know, always be 
um, just willing to pull it back. So when you're doing a color that's a dark color, it is very easy, again, to just um, be tempted to be heavy handed with the color. But instead, uh, what we should be aiming to do is then just do multiple glazes of it in, in, um, and also like the background color here, right? Or some of these other background colors. It's taken several glazes to get to that place, but it is still a glaze and you can still, all of this here is still very much the underpainting coming through, right? Like I didn't just paint over it. Um, I am leaving the underpainting uh, to, to do it, to shine, you know, the way it needs to shine. And so you just sometimes, you know, um, sometimes just have to do a couple, a couple goes. And that's just that. And what's interesting then is that it starts building up in a whole other way. And so you're really utilizing the information of the underpainting, um, but also, you know, you're adding chroma in a really intentional way. Okay, so... And see, this part here is very much in shadow. And it is extremely tempting <laughs> to just paint it that color. And instead, what I'm going to have to do is kind of slowly build up um, some of these shadows, just like I've done with the skin, right? And, and it's worth doing. It's, it's worth not rushing because you've come this far. And, you know, even if I have a goal in mind of, of how I want this to go down, um, I have to be willing to do the right thing for the painting, if that makes sense. Because the painting requires certain things. And it's a hard lesson. <laughs> um... But you gotta, you know, if you've if you've come this far, you gotta do it. You gotta do it the way the painting wants you to do it. And that's even, you know, that even rings true if you've noticed that there's a mistake. As I did the other week with the hair, right? Like if you notice something is off and even if you're like, oh God, I'm so close to being done. I just do not want to go back and fix this. Um, you know, you're only, you're only kind of cheating yourself and the painting and you'll look at that painting forever if you finish quote unquote, and you will know that, uh, you know, you did something, <laughs> you did something that perhaps, um, you could have avoided, we'll put it that way. And so it's really just a commitment. When you go down the road of a painting, that you honor the painting and what it wants and what it's asking of you the entire, all the way, right? From beginning to end. And so in that, I'm gonna real lightly just kind of indicate that these are a little bit darker here. But I think as I'm working on this, it is clear to me that I'm going to have to go in here
and uh, wait until this is dry. What I'm working on now and um, do the glazes, or I mean, I'm sorry, do the shadows in kind of their own glaze. And so, as I was saying with the darker, um, with, uh, you know, darker colors, the same thing holds true with bright colors. Because you're glazing, and you want a really like bright chroma, you gotta, um, you gotta build that up. It doesn't, uh, it's tempting to try and do it all at once, but it's not gonna work. You're gonna get a much better result if you kind of do it little bits at a time. Okay, so while this is wet, I am going to do a splash of my white here. I'm going to do a little bit of my highlight just to kind of so white uh, for a mesh technique it's not always the answer for every for painting right white is not always the answer um, I know it can kind of we can get into thinking that it is but it is not but for when you're meshing, there's definitely something to be said for a white glaze. It very often um, harmonizes what you're working on. bring out that extra, uh, just not even just the pop, because of course that's what highlights do, right? Like that's obvious, but um, just add that little, the, the, whatever's missing. Sometimes you're looking at something and you're like, what's missing, what's missing? And um, weirdly often, that you haven't put the white in yet. <laughs> like I said, it doesn't fix everything and, and it shouldn't just be like, a, oh, it must be the white. But often it is just the white. <laughs> and so I'm just kind of adding that in here while it is uh, wet. Just to kind of keep my colors doing what I want them to do. So what I've done actually is just add, is um, mix my cadmium red with a touch of white. So I'm not I'm not just going full white here right now. I don't need to. Uh, not at this stage of the game. Like I said, I've kind of decided that, that because, um, because I want the richness of color here, I'm actually going to purposefully take it a bit slower than I was um, working just before. So okay, 
Okie dokie. So you can just kind of go through right now. Um, you're going to be working the, okay, keep going on those shadows. Start into this section here. And again, you just want to be careful. And always uh, look at your reference. You've got all the information underneath, right? But but never take it for granted. Never just assume it's correct. Even if this is now what the maybe fifth, sixth time, really, you're looking at it uh, with all of the layers and all of the glazes and under you know from the very first kind of underpainting moment to the first glaze to the three times you've done the white right like you've looked at your painting a bunch but regardless I don't assume <laughs> that I have seen it correctly every single time because you just can't right like your eyes naturally just kind of um, fill in the blanks in a funny sort of way that's what they're supposed to do like when your eyes look at something um your brain gets part of the information and then literally it fills in the blanks so we never really um, you never really see everything. You only see part of stuff, which is very frustrating. I want to see everything. Uh, and so, you know, as a meditation practice, that's kind of an interesting thing to, um, you know, to kind of focus on, right? <laughs> And it's, uh, by constantly checking, constantly affirming and reaffirming and, um, you know, just not taking anything for granted, you get better and you get better and you really do go from kind of a pixelated version of reality to a much more high def view. And that's the beauty of it, right? Like, don't you want to see the world in all of its wonder and glory and beauty? I sure do. <laughs> And, you know, if you can do it while you're painting, guess what? It's just, it's just going to be like that when you look at everything else around you. And that's the goal, is that you get to see how beautiful the world is by getting to be very clear 
with what your eyes see. So it's worth never, um, don't underestimate what you're capable of. And if it's hard right now, just keep going and keep trying. And I appreciate you tuning in. I'm going to keep checking you with this. And like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye.